Hi, this is Ben Bradley, Technical Manager at the Transfer Press. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how I prepare images for making canvas wraps and explaining why I do what I do and hopefully um, showing you the finished result. I'm using Photoshop CS6, but everything that I do works in all the other versions of Photoshop. Uh, and it'll work as well in Photoshop Elements. The menus will be different in Photoshop Elements, but um, so long as you can find uh, image size and uh, canvas size, you can do exact. You can use exactly the same method. In fact, the keyboard shortcuts that I use work in Photoshop Elements as well. Okay, so let's look at this version of Photoshop quickly. I've got the default photography workspace uh, set at the moment. I just tend to use that because that's what I'm used to using. Um, but the key thing is that you can see the layers palette and down in the bottom right hand corner here this, is, this area will display the various layers that I'm working with. If you can't find layers um, just go to window and uh, where is it? Layers, there it is. And you can turn it on and off, toggle it on and off with the F7 key on the keyboard. Okay, so the whole point of a canvas wrap is that the edges of the image wrap around the sides of the canvas. Now in some photographs you might be lucky enough to have spare image surrounding the subject of your of your photograph and you can use that spare image to wrap around the sides of the canvas. That isn't always going to be the case and if you want to use a, a painting or a drawing for, for instance you won't have any spare image to wrap around the sides of the canvas and you want to get as much of that original image on the face of the canvas as you possibly can. You could just leave it white but that sort of defeats the object of having a canvas wrap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mirror the edges of the image onto the sides of the canvas. So let's open up an image. So file open and I'm going to use one of these Japanese prints, they're images of Japanese prints, and I'm going to choose this one. So let's just open that up. There we go. First thing, I'm just going to set the resolution, make sure it's the right size. So image and image size. First thing that I notice, the resolution is set to 180 pixels per inch. Because we're going to be transferring this image onto canvas, that's probably high enough, but the, the fabric of the uh, the weave of the fabric will hide any really fine details. But let's um, let, let's change that. It's that's not a really a standard resolution to work at. So the important thing is that I'm going to do now is take the tick out of resample, and I'm going to change it to something that I prefer to work with, which just happens to be 254 pixels per inch. Why 254 pixels per inch? Well, that just happens to be 10 pixels per millimeter. It's just a resolution that I like to work in. In some instances, when you're working with selections and modifying selections, it makes it easy because you know, you know exactly what one or two pixels is. Or if you want to make a selection slightly smaller by half a millimeter, you know that you just make it smaller by five pixels. Okay. Now. Canvas, uh, canvas stretcher bars and picture frames and all that type of stuff tend to be sized in inches. So I'm just going to change the units to inches. Okay, right, so that shows me that the image at 254 pixels per inch is a little bit too small. So I want to make it slightly bigger. The width, if we're making a 10 by 12 canvas, which is what I intend to do, is too long. It's too wide, so we'll crop that out in a minute. But for now, I need to make the, uh, the image a little bit higher. The important thing to do is put the tick in resample and make sure that constrained proportions is also ticked so that when I add a little bit to the height, when I make this 10, the width also increases in proportion, so the aspect ratio of the image is maintain maintained. Simply a case of clicking OK now. Okay. Just the image is just being made slightly bigger. Double click the hand tool, fits the image onto the screen. Need to crop the image left to right. So click on the crop tool, 
At the minute, the crop tool is unconstrained, but I need to make this image 12 by 10. At the minute, I can just do this. I can do whatever I want. It doesn't really work for what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm just going to make the width 12 inches and the height 10 inches. Now, ideally, what I'd like to do is to be able to use the cursor keys to shuffle a pixel at a time but I can't do that at the moment. This could be just a quirk of uh, CS6, or it could be a quirk of the way I work. But what I found I have to do is click on uh, this button here, which is the cancel current crop operation. Go back into the area, click again, and now I can shuffle the image backwards and forwards using the cursor keys. The reason I want to use the cursor keys rather than dragging with the mouse is that I don't want any vertical movement, up or down movement. Um, I just want to crop left and right. So this is the uh, most accurate way to do it. So I'm just going to shuffle the image backwards and forwards a little. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We've got this little bit of text here. We don't really want to crop the text, that would look a bit odd if the text was cropped and we've got a little bit of this tree in here, that's okay. So just a case of clicking the tick which commits the crop. And there we go. Uh, I'm just going to press V on the keyboard because I find, which gets me the move tool, because I find that these crop guides from the uh, crop tool are a bit distracting. So V on the keyboard gets me back to the move tool. Okay, so this is the area that's going to be on the face of the canvas, the bit we're going to look at, the bit we're interested in. And just so we can see exactly what we're doing, I'm going to put in some guides. This, Once you're used to doing this process, you really don't need to do this, but it, it, it illustrates uh, what's going on more clearly. So those guides have just snapped to the edge of the, uh, edge of the image. Next image and canvas size rather than image size canvas size because I'm going to add a border to the image and again change to inches because all of our uh, frames and frames and stretcher bars are sized in inches so I need enough canvas to go down the sides of the uh, the stretcher bars and round the back so that I've got something to staple into so what I find is it's better if you can leave, if you can add four inches, two inches left and right, two inches top and bottom. So this becomes 16 and the height becomes 14. And um, okay, I've kind of made a, a deliberate mistake here. This is what I've seen a lot of people do. They work with the layer, if you look over here on the right, right hand side the as a background layer and it's locked I don't like doing that I'll show you what happens I'll click OK I've uh, changed to white okay fine no no real problem with that as such but if I take the mark tool mark E tool sorry make a selection copy and paste. I have these areas of white in here and I don't want those in there um, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just going to control alt Z to undo. Let's go back and back. Okay so let's unlock this background layer. This new layer window opens and background layer becomes layer 0 but it's unlocked. So let's just go back to image Canvas size, inches, let's make this a 16 by 14, click OK. Aha, we have a clear background. So that's important because what I can now do is with the marquee tool, simply drag a selection over this area. Now because I have a clear background, I don't need to be precise about making this selection. I don't need to get it exactly on this edge. I can just drag over it. The only thing I need to make sure is that the distance from that corner to that edge of the marquee is bigger than the distance from the edge of the canvas to the edge of the existing image. So I'll just go Control C 
and control V. That's one way of doing it. There are others and I'll show you another technique in a minute. The next step is edit, transform, uh, flip horizontal. V for the move tool and I'm just going to drag this out to that point there. I'm just going to control H to hide the guide so I can see what I'm doing. Select the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom right in on this join. And using the move tool, you can see there that's where the uh, the background or layer zero and our new layer meet and overlap. And I just need to make sure that it's completely overlapped. Okay. Double click the hand tool to fit. Okay, happy with that. That's great, that works. Back over to layer zero, make layer zero the active layer. Marquee tool again. This time, right click. Uh, and let's make a new layer via copy. Does exactly the same thing. You can see over here we now have layer two. Um, move tool, let's, uh, in fact, let's edit. Transform, flip horizontal, let's get the move tool, drag it out, zoom, spacebar gets me the hand tool, and I just like to shuffle backwards and forwards just to be sure that I'm getting that gap completely closed so there's no gap, because that will show if uh, in your in your final canvas if, if there is a gap there. Okay, so I've got three layers here. Now, I could just go back to layer zero, get my uh, marquee tool, make a selection. In fact, let me show you, just click out of there. So I'm gonna select all the way across, but because we've only actually got this layer, layer zero active, control C, control V, Edit, transform, flip vertical, move it up. That's fine, but we've got these white corners. You can be lucky and you can that will tuck underneath the canvas when you do your when you actually fold the canvas around the stretcher bars, but I prefer to do something different. So let me just step backwards. Okay. Now this is where I use a, a keyboard shortcut. And it's Control, Alt, Shift, all held down, and then just press E. Press and release E. And what that's done is it's combined all these three layers together into a new layer. So I now have layer three. If I turn off all of those other layers, you can see that we now have everything in one layer. So now I'm going to take the marquee tool, drag, right click, layer via copy, Edit, transform, flip vertical, move it up. Okay, zoom in on this point here. The zoom tool in newer versions of Photoshop is something that is different to the uh, to the older versions. So you may need to just double click in a particular area to zoom in. But okay, so we've got a good overlap there. Okay, back to layer three this time. Marquee tool. Right click, layer via copy. Transform, flip vertical. V, this is probably where lining up is least important, but um, I always like to check. V for the move tool, yeah. I always like to give it an extra pixel or two just to make sure we've got a good, good clean overlap. Double click the hand tool, and there we go. Now I like to again use the Control Alt Shift E so that I have a, uh, a completely merged layer to print. And if I control H, so we can see the guides, you can see exactly what's going to happen here. The bit in the middle is the bit that's going to be on the front of the canvas. 
these bits all the way around in this margin will be folded down the sides of the canvas and wrapped around the back and there's a, hopefully there's a little bit spare so we can put some staples in as well. So that's, that's the process complete. It's just a case of now sending it to print. Now there's something that I do tend to forget if you we're talking about using this for dye sublimation so what I have to do in this case particularly if I'm using a Rico printer is use image image rotation flip the canvas horizontally so that it's mirrored so that when we print onto the paper and then press onto the canvas the image is the right way around okay thank you for watching and um, Hopefully see you in the next video.